Hello and welcome to my first behind the scenes video. We're currently driving through Deception Valley in the Central Kalahari Game Reserve in Botswana. In this video I'm going to try and show you a bit of what happens behind the scenes on a filming expedition such as this one. Uh, please follow along and if you like this sort of thing let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and make more of these in the future. But let's start from the beginning. After weeks of planning, my mother and I finally set off from Hermanus, near the southernmost tip of Africa, with everything we needed for a few weeks in the bush. Cameras, chargers, batteries, food, water, a small coffee table, and a dog named Apologize. Our journey took us through the beautiful Karoo, then across the border into Botswana. We offloaded the dog and coffee table in Gaborone, then continued north, the main roads in Botswana are generally good, but we nonetheless reduced our speed to around 100 km an hour to avoid livestock in the road. After three long days of driving, we finally turned off the tar road, aired down the tyres, locked the hubs and headed down the dirt track that leads to the central Kalahari game reserve. Matswere Gate I installed my car mount and set up my camera, but we didn't see much on the way in other than a group of bat-eared foxes as we crossed the valley. We arrived at our campsite after dark, quickly set up our tents, ate a pre-cooked meal and went to bed. The next few days were spent exploring Deception Valley. Every morning we would wake up before dawn and head out at first light. This area of the park was quite dry, with no standing water, and daytime temperatures were pushing 40 degrees centigrade. The animals here are remarkably adapted to these conditions, and we saw numerous Gemsbok and Springbok as well as a variety of birds and the bat-eared fox family we had spotted on the way in. On the second day, we came across a coalition of three male lions. They were lying right next to the road, not doing much at all, so we continued down to Deception Loop, where we had been told a cheetah with two cubs had been seen. We were lucky enough to find the cheetahs near the road and watch the cubs playing for a short while before their mother led them off into the bush. We returned to the lions who were of course still resting, so we moved off a bit to shoot a time lapse while keeping an eye on the lions with the binoculars. At sunset they finally started to move. We followed them for as long as we could, but eventually the light was gone and we had to head back to camp. After three nights camping in Deception Valley, we packed up camp and headed west toward Tao Pan. We took the faster cut line route, which was uneventful, but easy driving. The Central Kalahari Game Reserve covers 52,000 square kilometers, almost 10% of Botswana's total land area. At Taupan, we checked into Kwando Safari's Taupan Camp for a couple of nights of luxury. Taupan Camp is perched on a dune overlooking the pan, and each room has a private balcony and outdoor shower with a view. Plus, there was electricity to charge up my batteries, and they kindly filled the water tank on the vehicle as well.
This area had had more rain and there were large herds of springbok, gemsbok and wildebeest on the pan. Every afternoon spectacular rain clouds would form and the area would be bathed in golden light. Other than the large herds on the pan, there were also numerous jackal and bat-eared foxes about. We also saw a lone giraffe drinking, a beautiful male lion at sunrise and a cheetah resting under a tree. After two days of comfort at Taupan camp, it was time to move on. This time we took the northern Passage Valley Road heading east. My mother did most of the driving, thanks mom, so I could be ready to mount the camera if we came across anything interesting. But we were driving during the hottest time of the day, when the animals tend to rest in the shade, so there was not much to see. The Leopard Pan campsite is quite remote, and there was nobody staying at Sunday Pan, a few kilometers away, so I think we were probably about 20 kilometers from the nearest human beings. The campsites in the central Kalahari Game Reserve are very basic, just a fireplace, a long drop toilet and an enclosure with a bucket shower for which you need to bring your own water. We set up camp and quickly headed out to shoot a sunset time lapse on the pan. From Leopard Pan, we could drive east to Sunday Pan, where there is a man-made waterhole, or south to Deception Valley. On the second day, we went south and visited the small copse of trees where Mark and Delia Owens camped for seven years in the 1970s. They were studying brown hyenas and other desert wildlife, and they later wrote the book Cry of the Kalahari about this experience. On most days we would return to camp to eat lunch and wait out the heat of the day. I used this time to back up my footage and charge my batteries. At around 3 o'clock in the afternoon I'd boil some water on the gas stove and make a strong cup of coffee. Then we would head out again for an afternoon drive, returning only when it was too dark to film. I usually eat frozen pre-cooked meals when filming so I can get to bed as early as possible, but it's still nice to make a fire each evening. The campsites here are unfenced, so a fire is good for both ambience and safety. On our second day at Leopard Pan, we headed across to Sunday Waterhole to find a big male lion lying next to the road. He was covered in blood from a recent kill and was totally unfazed by our vehicle. So I quickly mounted my camera and started filming. We followed him to the waterhole where he had a drink, then walked around scent marking trees before collapsing in the shade. That evening, on a sunset drive around Leopard Pan, we found a pride of lions with three cubs right in the road. The light was fading fast, but I managed to grab a few shots. The young male was very curious, coming right up to the car to see what we were up to. After the light was gone, we hung around with them as long as we could before heading back to camp.
After three nights at Leopard Pan, it was time to leave the Central Kalahari Game Reserve. We headed down to Deception Valley, then east out of Matsuere Gate, and back onto the tarmac. We were heading toward Makharikhari and Naipan National Parks in the hope of filming the zebra migration. Our next stop was Boteti River Camp, on the banks of the Boteti River, close to Kumaga Gate. This mid-range camp is very comfortable, with delicious meals and both chalets and camping available. We decided to take a break from the driving and go on a guided safari in one of their open vehicles. The Bateti was dry with only a few pools of water, but the bird life was still fantastic and there were quite a few elephants and other animals in the area. Unfortunately, the large zebra herds we were looking for had not yet reached this area, so we headed out across the Makharikhari Pans National Park, hoping to find them. As we travelled east, the bush opened out into seemingly endless grasslands. These plains and the pans themselves are the remnants of a prehistoric lake that once covered an area larger than Switzerland, but dried up tens of thousands of years ago. Makharikhari means the waterless place, and the animals that live here must survive without drinking for most of the year. We saw ostrich, red hartebeest, ground squirrel and a secretary bird but still no zebras. We had planned to camp at Tree Island, but decided rather to head north to Naipan National Park in the hope of finding the large zebra herds. So we left the park near Guerta and travelled west along the tar road to the entrance gates. The road into Naipan is very sandy, but was easy going because of the rain a few nights before. On our way in, we started seeing small herds of zebra heading in the same direction as us, and an elephant decided it would be fun to make us reverse for a few kilometers. We set up camp under the trees at South Camp. For some reason the hornbills here have developed a taste for the rubber on windscreen wipers. We tried putting aluminium foil around them, but it didn't help much. I thought I'd give you a quick rundown of my filming vehicle. It's a Land Cruiser 76 station wagon. On the roof I have two 20 litre jerry cans of diesel and a 40 litre water tank. On the passenger side is my custom-built car mount that holds my fluid head. I'm using a Sigma 300-800mm zoom lens on a Red Weapon magnesium camera. On the back seat I have a 50-litre Dometic fridge. Under the passenger seat I've installed an inverter for charging all my batteries. The inverter is powered from either the starter battery or the deep cycle battery in the rear of the vehicle. In the back I have a custom built set of drawers. I've added a hose pipe to easily access water from the tank on the roof, plus I have another 25 litre container of drinking water in the back. The bottom right hand drawer has a small basin and drying rack, and the top drawer holds the gas stove and all our plates and utensils.
The left hand drawer is mostly food, plus extra gas, mosquito spray and other frequently used items. Above the drawers are a pair of slide out work surfaces. These can also be removed and used as tables. I haven't done much in the front other than adding a few extra USB ports and attaching plastic containers to the dash for extra storage. I run an extension lead from the inverter under the passenger seat to my small table so I can work comfortably and power my hard drives and laptop. After setting up camp we took a drive to the main waterhole. The roads were still quite wet and my stock tyres were quickly coated in sticky mud, making for some slippery driving. One disadvantage of the wet season is that the animals have easy access to water, so they don't congregate as much at the water holes. Since we had run out of pre-cooked meals by this point, we started cooking over the fire. A black jackal waited just outside the firelight in the hope of stealing some scraps. There were lots of bugs around at night. Some were friendly, some not so friendly. When my mother took a break from driving, filming became a bit more tricky. First I would get the car into position, then I would start booting my camera and climb over to the passenger side of the vehicle to level the tripod head and mount the camera before I could start filming. We were very happy to find large herds of zebra in the area, with more arriving each day. After four nights at South Camp, it was time to leave, so we headed back towards the gate only to meet another elephant. This time we reversed for over half an hour. On our way out of the park, we took the detour to visit Baines Baobabs. With water on many of the pans, the views here were spectacular. we aired up the tyres, unlocked the hubs, turned onto the tarmac and started the long journey home.